September 12th, 2024. A day that will live in infamy for chess players around the world. The day the digital chess boards fell silent. The day LightChess.org, the beloved free and open source chess platform, experienced its longest downtime in history. But before we dive into this gripping tale of bits, bites, and bishops, let's set the stage. For those unfamiliar, LightChess isn't just another chess website. It's a beacon of hope in the often commercialized world of online gaming. Founded in 2010 by Thibaut Duplessis, LightChess has grown into a global phenomenon, serving millions of chess enthusiasts daily without ever charging a dime or plastering the site with ads. LightChess is more than just a place to play chess. It's a thriving community, a learning platform, and a hub for chess events worldwide. And on that fateful day in September, it was in the midst of hosting commentary for one of the most prestigious events in the chess calendar, the Chess Olympiad. Little did anyone know that in just a few hours, this chess paradise would be plunged into digital dark but fear not, for this is not just a tale of woe, it's a story of resilience, ingenuity, and the indomitable spirit of the chess community. So grab your favorite chess piece and prepare for a roller coaster ride through the inner workings of one of the internet's most beloved platforms. This is the story of the Great Lychess Blackout. September 12th, 2024, 1453 UTC. All was well in the world of online chess. Thousands of games were in progress on light chess. Pawns were being pushed, knights were leaping across the board, and somewhere an unsuspecting rook was about to be forked. Grandmaster Ilya Nizhnik was in the middle of providing expert analysis on the ongoing chess Olympiad. His insights were being streamed to chess fans worldwide, all thanks to the robust infrastructure of light chess. Once again, it feels a little bit strange. Like, why does White have to do any of this? Like, what if White just ignores everything in castles? Why does White is behind in development? was really nothing to show for it. I don't know. Little did GM Nizhnik know that in just 60 seconds, his stream, and indeed all of Lychess, would come to a screeching halt. At the heart of Lychess's operations is a server known affectionately as Manta. Now let's take a moment to understand what a server like Manta actually does. In simple terms, a server is a powerful computer that provides services to other computers, known as clients. In the case of Lychess, Manta is responsible for processing game moves, managing user accounts, and ensuring that when you click that new game button, you are quickly paired with an opponent of similar skill. Manta doesn't work alone though. It's part of a complex ecosystem of servers and databases, all humming along in perfect harmony within a data center operated by OVH, one of Europe's largest cloud computing providers. But as the clock ticked over to 1454 UTC, this digital symphony was about to hit a sour note. In an instant, Manta lost its connection to Lychess's private network. It was as if the giant manta ray had suddenly vanished from the digital ocean. Across the globe, chess players found themselves staring at frozen screens. Games halted mid-move, chess engines fell silent, and poor GM Nizhnik found himself unable to demonstrate the chess moves in the tournament. It's not on my end, I promise. Within seconds, I imagine alerts started blaring in the Lychess virtual office. Thibaut Duplisi, the founder and main developer of Lychess, and Lucas, the charity's president and chief system administrator, sprang into action. We don't know exactly what they said, so throughout this video, I'm going to take a little creative liberty and guess what their conversation was like. Lucas, are you seeing this? Manta's gone dark. I'm on it, Tibu. Running diagnostics now. What happened next was a flurry of activity that would make even the most complex chess combination look simple by comparison. As Tibu and Lucas dove into the digital abyss, they first attempted to implement their usual fail-safes. But like a chess player finding all their carefully planned lines thwarted, nothing seemed to work. Tibu, everything I'm trying is not working. It's like Manta is completely disappeared from our network. 
This is unprecedented. We need to dig deeper. As minutes ticked by, a grim realization dawned on our chess tech heroes. This wasn't a simple software glitch or a network hiccup. The problem likely lay in the physical hardware itself, nestled deep within OVH's data center. For those unfamiliar with data centers, imagine a vast climate controlled room filled with rows upon rows of powerful computers. These aren't your average desktop PCs, but specialized machines built to handle massive amounts of data and traffic. They're the unsung heroes of the internet, working tirelessly behind the scenes to keep our digital world spinning. But even these digital giants aren't immune to physical problems. A loose cable, a faulty power supply, or an overheating component could bring even the mightiest server to its knees. Lucas, I think we're dealing with a hardware issue. We need to contact OVH pronto. On it. I'm submitting a support ticket now. As Lucas reached out to OVH, the clock read 1533 UTC. Little did they know, this was just the beginning of a long and arduous journey. While Tibu and Lucas were battling the technical gremlins, another drama was unfolding behind the scenes. The Light Chess content team, responsible for streaming the Chess Olympiad commentary, found themselves in a predicament. All right, team, we've got a situation. Light Chess is down, but we still have hours left of Olympiad commentary. We need solutions, and we need them fast. What about setting up a temporary stream on another platform? No good. Our commentator needs to access our analysis tools, and they're all integrated into Light Chess. Wait, what about the private sandbox version of Light Chess. It's not connected to our other servers. We could get Ilya set up on there. The private sandbox was a separate, isolated version of Light Chess used for testing new features. It wasn't designed for live commentary, but desperate times call for desperate measures. In a flurry of activity, the team worked to reconfigure the sandbox and get GM Nizhnik connected. It was a Herculean task completed in record time. Thanks to the quick thinking of the content team and the professionalism of GM Nizhnik, the Chess Olympiad commentary continued almost seamlessly. But while this particular checkmate had been avoided, the larger battle to revive Lychess was far from over. Lychess was still down for most players around the world. Back in the virtual war room, Tibu and Lucas were anxiously waiting for OVH to send a technician to fix the physical issue with their server. OVH is taking forever to fix this issue. Is there anything else we can do to get Lychess back online? Let's think. There must be a way to get things up, at least temporarily. What followed was a brainstorming session that would put most think tanks to shame. Ideas ranged from the practical to the outlandish, each more desperate than the last. As the minutes turned into hours, the Light Chess team's brainstorming session reached fever pitch. Let's imagine some of the ideas being tossed around. What if we set up a temporary server cluster on a separate cloud provider? Possible, but migrating our data and services would take days, not hours. Could we set up a simplified version of Light Chess that just allows basic gameplay? Maybe, but it wouldn't have all the features our users love. Plus, we'd still need to host it somewhere. What about reaching out to our community. Someone's gotta have a spare server farm lying around. And any other community I'd say that's crazy, but our community, it just might work. While these ideas might sound far-fetched, they highlight the creativity and dedication of the Lychess team. No stone was left unturned in their quest to get the site back online. To understand why these solutions were so challenging, let's break down what makes Lychess tick. At its core, Lychess is a complex ecosystem of various services. The game server, which handles all the chess moves and game logic. The user database, storing information about millions of players. The analysis engine, providing those deep insights into each position. The matchmaking system, ensuring you always have an opponent at your level. And then the streaming infrastructure for tournaments and events. Each of these components needs to work in perfect harmony for Lychess to function. As the team continued to brainstorm, the clock ticked past 1730 UTC. Nearly two hours had passed since the initial outage and still no update from OVH. Just as despair was starting to set in, a notification chimed. OVH had responded to the support ticket. Finally, they say they've just replaced a network connector. A network connector? That's it? A collective sigh of relief echoed through the virtual war room. After hours of uncertainty, it seemed the end was in sight. Great work, everyone. Let's start preparing for our site to come back online. We'll need to... 
Chibu's words were cut short by another alert. The celebration, it seemed, was premature. Oh no, Tibu, you're not gonna believe this. What now? The network connector's been replaced, but now there's another network connector that's out of order. In a twist worthy of the most dramatic chess matches, Lychess had been hit with a double attack. Just as one problem was solved, another reared its ugly head. You gotta be kidding me! What are the odds? The odds, as it turns out, were astronomical. Having two network connectors fail in such quick succession was almost unheard of. I'm submitting another support ticket to OV8, but it's almost 1900 UTC. I don't think we're gonna get another response until morning. The realization hit the team like a thunderbolt. What was already a long downtime was about to stretch into the night. As the sun set over Europe, the Leicest team settled in for a long night. The infrastructure channel of their tulip chat was buzzing with activity. Messages flying back and forth like pieces in a bullet chess game. For those unfamiliar, Zulip is an open source team chat application similar to Slack or Microsoft Teams. It's the virtual office where the distributed Lychess team coordinates their efforts. As the night wore on, the messages in the Zulip channel passed the 1000 mark. Ideas were proposed and discarded. Theories were debated. And through it all, the Lychess community rallied. As the clock struck 2200 UTC, the team had been battling the outage for over seven hours. With no further word from OVH, it seemed increasingly likely that the issue wouldn't be resolved until morning. Tibu, I think we need to call it a night. I've set alerts just in case OVH responds. Good idea, Lucas. Just get some rest. I'll keep watch. And so, as Europe slept, Tibu stood vigil. Like a knight guarding a king, he watched over the digital realm of Lychess, ready to spring into action at a moment's notice. Hours ticked by. 11 p.m., midnight, 1 a.m., the Lychess server remained stubbornly offline. Then, at 41 minutes past midnight, UTC, a flicker of hope. Tibu noticed some unusual activity in the server logs. What's this? It looks like, is someone working on the server? Indeed, it seemed that an OVH technician had finally arrived to address the second faulty network connector. But after so many hours of disappointment, Tibu dared not get his hopes up. For the next 44 minutes, Tibu watched with bated breath as the log showed signs of life. Servers restarting, services coming online, and then, it's up! Lychess is back online! At 1.25 UTC, after more than 10 hours of downtime, Lychess sprang back to life. The digital chess boards were once again open for business. As word spread that Lychess was back online, chess players around the world rejoiced. Games resumed, tournaments restarted, and the familiar hum of chess activity filled the digital air. But for the Lychess team, the work was far from over. In the days that followed, they embarked on a thorough post-mortem of the outage. All right, team, we need to understand exactly what happened so we can prevent it from happening again. I've been in touch with OVH. They're providing us details with the hardware that was replaced. We need to look into setting up more robust failover systems. Maybe distribute our services over multiple data centers. That would help, but it would also significantly increase our operational costs. And there was the challenge. Lychess, as a free and open source platform run entirely on donations, had to carefully balance technical improvements with financial realities. The great Lychess blackout of 2024 taught the team several valuable lessons. One, the importance of geographic redundancy. Having all critical services in one data center created a single point of failure. Then the need for better communication channels with service providers. The long wait time for responses from OVH highlighted the need for more direct lines of communication in emergency situations. The strength of the Lychess community, the outpouring of support and understanding from users reinforced the special bond between Lychess and its community, and the challenges of running a major platform with volunteer resources. While the team's dedication was unquestionable, the incident highlighted the need for more full-time support. The Great Lychess Blackout of 2024 was more than just a technical glitch. It was a testament to the resilience of a community, the dedication of volunteers, and the power of open source collaboration.